Hi, I'm Lizzie Harper and today I'm going to be making a companion film to go with the other one I've done of illustrating a cuckoo flower with an orange tip butterfly. I was going to do them both in the same film but by the time I painted the cuckoo flower it's too long. So today I'm going to be painting the orange tip butterfly and I've got some specimens here onto the cuckoo flower. So yeah, so please do join me and hopefully um, it'll be an interesting way to spend a little time. As you can see uh, with this companion film, it's going to be me painting the butterflies. Now I'm going to try and make it shorter than the film that I did before painting a cuckoo flower because that was quite a long one. Um, so there'll be quite a lot of shortcuts, but I just wanted to share with you how I go about painting butterflies. This here is the orange tip uh, with its wings shut, resting on the plant. And I did that one a little bit earlier. And what we're going to do now is we're going to crack on with this one, which is um, an adult male. And we know it's a male. I'm working from these specimens, which are old Victorian ones that I've been given by a friend. Um, so they're quite old. They're a little bit faded, but they're not too bad. Um, but we know it's a male because of the orange tips. The females do not have these orange tips. So we're going to be doing a mail and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Usually I um, use a number one paintbrush, a series seven number one. Today I'm using a number two because all my number ones have slightly dodgy tips because I've overused them. Uh, the orange I've mixed up is simply this, which is, I think, cadmium orange light. It's really, it's not mixed with anything else or anything. And the first thing I do when I'm painting butterflies is I outline the veins and you've got to keep them super thin. Oh, that's a butterfly leg on a cuckoo flower. How sad. Okay, so. And you can probably tell when I do these straight lines, the trick is always to look where you're going rather than at the tip of the brush. And don't be surprised if you find this very exacting indeed. It is very exacting. And in fact, as you can tell, when I do very, very fine lines like this, I don't breathe. So, so make sure you do remember to breathe because that would be sad. So these are just outlining the veins. Now, I find putting the veins of the butterfly wing in incredibly important. If I don't have them there, I sort of lose the structure of the butterfly completely. Um, for me, they're the, the scaffolding on which everything else gets built up. So just putting these in. And it's always worth, even if you've got a specimen, it's always worth going online and double checking to make sure that the veins that you think you've observed when you've drawn a butterfly up are in the right position. I find it quite difficult to see them sometimes, which then I suppose begs the question, well, why do you make them so obvious in your illustration? Um, and it's just because, well, they help me. They help me to paint. And also I think they, they give a clarity and a, sh a crispness to the butterfly when it's fully illustrated. Okay, so that's the one's going sideways. Whoops, I don't want it being too thick. That is too thick. Tut tut. There you go. So what I did with this, I drew it up in pencil, like I did the plant. So I drew it up with my trusty Pentel P205. Um, but then what I did is, because often when I'm painting butterflies, the pencil lines are too heavy and as I think I've said before you can uh, I messed that up you can rub out pencil lines once you've done watercolor but sometimes it's not brilliant and these butterflies in amongst all the you know the the, the colors that we're talking about they're they're quite pale so they're bright yellows and whites and all that kind of stuff I do not want there to be the shadow of pencil lines there so before beginning this, 
I stopped just for a second to double check to see what colour the edges of this top vein are. Um, before beginning this, I, I, with a soft rubber, went over the pencil lines and erased them so they're very, very faint. They're barely there. It's also, <clears throat> if you can possibly do it, it's also better if you're doing a line just to do one line rather than numerous lines. Keeps it crisper. Now, although the edges of this butterfly wing are brown, I'm going to outline it just to hold the whole shape in. There we go. Now, I'm going to, not going to outline these veins in orange because they're not orange. And I'm only going to do this one wing, and that is... Um, to save time so what i'm going to do is i'm literally i'm going to paint this half of the butterfly and then i'll switch to the other side once i've um filmed this side and i'll show you the finished result so i've got those veins in so the next thing i want to do is i want to put in the basics of that orange and again i'm looking going to look at the specimen all the time oh the other thing i'm going to do is you see that these tips of the butterfly wing are dark brown I could just do them as dark brown, but I think they're going to look better if I lay that brown over the orange. So I'm going to take the orange all the way to the edge of the wing. The only bit I'm not going to do is on the very edge of the wing, there are these tiny little white bits. So I'm not going to do those. But other than that, the entire thing is going to be orange. So I start literally by just doing lots of tiny little pencil, pencil lines. That's not going to work, is it? Lots of tiny little watercolour marks. I mean, this is how I, you know, this is, as you've learnt by now, probably, if you've seen my videos, this is how I do most things. I just build up layers of colour with watercolour by doing this. Now, I try and make sure that the darkest areas within each of these cells, these sections of wings, where the colour lies most heavily, is in the shadow of the veins, so right up next to the veins. I also need to be aware of where the orange stops and the white starts because otherwise it would be very easy to make the entire butterfly orange and then we would be in a disastrous situation because the entire butterfly is not orange, only the tips. In, um, in the continent, we call this butterfly the orange tip. <clears throat> in the continent, um, one, some of the names are slightly more poetic, so... I think in France they call it the sunset butterfly or the sunrise butterfly or something like that. It's one of the um, earliest butterflies that we get in the UK. And that is because it overwinters as a chrysalis. So it pupates and then keeps its head down, so to speak. Sees out the winter, hopes it doesn't get eaten by a small mammal in the long cold mornings of January or whatever and if it makes it through it hatches out and is ready to go seeking a mate or a food plant first thing early March so they're one of the earliest butterflies and they always make you think hey spring's coming I love them Latin name is Anthocharis cardaminis. Now, those of you who are more alert um, will have clocked that the cuckoo flower on which this butterfly is illustrated and also upon which its caterpillars feed. The cuckoo flower is called cardamine pretense, or is it pretensis? I can't remember. I've got it written down somewhere. Um, and there's a reason for that close link. So the two, the two, um, species are very closely linked so it's the main the main host plant for the orange tip is definitely cuckoo flower and they will <coughs> <coughs> they can the caterpillars can um, feed on some other plants in the same kind of mustardy family things like garlic mustard come to mind um, some of the brassicas but they do very much prefer cuckoo flower so you can see i'm just building up a 
just a, a, a sort of a blanket of orange and this is stupid look i'm so stupid so now in order to do that bit i've got to rest on the paint which is still slightly wet which means i have to do something quite cunning by hooking my little finger up to support my hand uh, so that it does not go and smudge on the wet paint although the benefit is with such tiny marks as this the watercolour does dry very very quickly um, equipment as I mentioned I'm using a Windsor & Newton Series 7 sable brush I'm still questing for a good synthetic alternative I'm yet to find one. Um, I did do a series of films trying to find one, but there are so many alternatives that I've now stopped doing that. I just try them every now and then. If I find an amazing one that does the trick, I will, of course, share it with you lot. Um, so, yeah, the paintbrush is a Winsor & Newton Series 7. Um, and the size today is a 2. Normally I use a 1, but the 1 is in the post to me. I haven't, I haven't got a number 1 today with a decent point paper I'm using is Fluid 100, which is produced by Global Arts. And again, this is a paper that I found after a long quest. I used to love Fabriano Classico or Fabriano Artistico. Um, and then the manufacturer of that paper changed when the, I think when the paper mill started making the paper, the Euro banknotes, are printed on at least that's what i read um, and for some reason it meant that the manufacturer of fabriano hot press watercolor paper was altered in some way that meant for what i do and in fact for what a lot of other botanical illustrators and so on do it was no longer the best paper so we all had heartbreak and you know all sorts of drama online what should we do what are we going to paint on our life has come to an end um and a lot of people, um, Diane Sutherland springs to mind, but a lot of people did a lot of research into alternatives. Um, and I did a fair amount. I made some films about it. And the ones that I ended up, the papers I ended up liking most are this one, Fluid 100, and um, Stonehenge Aqua by Legion Papers. So those are my go-to hot press watercolour papers now. Equipment done oh yeah the paints are just well they're, well they're whatever really it's a i've got a paint box which is full of Winsor and newton pans and i top them up from the tube which a lot of people say you shouldn't do but i've never had a problem with it and i don't even necessarily top them up with Winsor and newton you know dale Rowney, Winsor and newton sennelier doesn't really make too much difference as long as it's the same color right and sometimes I'm so unprofessional. Sometimes I don't even top them up the same colour, especially with the greens. It's like, oh, gosh. So the other day I, I topped up a, a very bluish green with one that I thought was the same, and it's totally different. But actually, using the two greens together in that, you know, the, the pan one, which was norm normally almost run out, along with the top-up tube, which was a different, slightly different hue. It's a great green. I'm really happy with it. I won't ever be able to replicate it, but it's great while it lasts. This all ties into my whole philosophy of don't get too hung up on stuff when you do painting. Just enjoy what you're doing. That's the main thing. So, yeah, you can see this is building up. Quite nicely. Um, what can I tell you about the orange tip? So... I did do a bit of reading about the orange tip for making this film research um, and I referred to the very excellent book called Butterflies of Britain and Ireland by Jeremy Thomas and Richard Lewington. Richard Lewington is a massive massive hero of mine. He's a brilliant insect illustrator he is also an extremely fine naturalist. Um, he probably knows as much about British butterflies as anyone, I should imagine. Um, and he paints them in a way that just makes me... It doesn't make me want to give up because I think there's room for everybody. But his, his insect illustrations are so good. They come from a place of... 
deep passion and deep understanding and extreme craftsmanship. Look him up, Richard Lewington. He's also, I met him once, he's very self-effacing. He's a lovely guy. Um, okay, so what's happening here? I need to figure out where this orange is ending. Okay. So yeah, like I said, do you remember I said that only the males have the orange tips? And that is true. Uh, the females, they're very pretty, but they don't have the orange tips. Um, and they spend most of their lives not really flying around. They hang out near cuckoo flowers and, you know, after after mating. So the male will go out and find the female. And the female, obviously, she has pheromone-specific smells. And the, the, the males will emerge in the spring. They are keen. They are hot to trot. So they will find any any available female that they can they'll even check out females from different species like large whites and stuff like that just be like are you the beauty that i've been looking for all my life no wrong species spells the smells wrong oh. but so eventually they will find a, a orange tip female and then they will mate the female swings her abdomen round supposedly at a 90 degree angle which sounds quite exotic and then they mate, um, and the males very much prefer females that haven't been... Oh, I should say what I'm doing, shouldn't I? Uh, so I've mixed up a yellow now. This is much yellower. This is just cadmium yellow dark. Literally, again, straight from the from the um, box. A bit watery. And that's just going to go on top of the, um, the, the initial layer of paint, just to make it... It a bolder brighter thing and it also it won't compromise the um the difference in lights and dark so much uh, so yeah so so the females the females get mated and the males prefer prefer virgin females and i think they can tell the difference by the smell um and this is obviously because if you find a female butterfly who has not been mated by any other male butterfly then it is far more likely that you can be guaranteed paternity. Perhaps that's why the British royal family always used to have a penchant for marrying their monarchs off to virgins. Anyway, so yeah, so the orange tips will mate and then the females, oh, that's annoying, a bit of the brush has fallen out. It's okay, I'll pick it up later. The females will go on a quest to find um, a good host plant for their to lay their leg their eggs on, and they will favour the cuckoo flower, and they're quite methodical about it, and they don't sort of flit about. They 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 get their they don't get their heads down, but you know what I mean. Quite serious about it. They don't mess about. They go along hedgerows looking for a specific thing. They know what they're after. They want one. One cuckoo flower on the edge of a much bigger patch of cuckoo flower in the sun. And they definitely want one that has not already got an egg laid by another orange tip female. And this is because orange tip caterpillars are slightly cannibalistic. So I think the stat is something like 10% of orange tip. Orange tips are, are lost before pupating because of cannibalism. She's not very high, so obviously it's something they tend to avoid. Why, I hear you cry, would they such lovely animals do what, such a terrible thing? It's not really, it makes sense. So the caterpillars, to start with, they sort of feed a bit generally, but with age, they only will eat the mature seed pods of the cardamine, of the cuckoo flower. Um, and the cuckoo flower may well not produce that many of these seed pods so if there's a lot of orange tip caterpillars on one plant then they're all all the caterpillars are going to starve so if you can find a plant which doesn't have other caterpillars on then you're more likely to be guaranteed success and um, if somebody comes along and lays their egg on your cuckoo flower, let's say, and you're the in-residence caterpillar, 
then you're not really going to feel like sharing, especially if it's going to cost you your life. So it might be worth just having a little extra snack, right? Um, I think it makes sense anyway. Um, the males are very, very active when they're seeking mates. They flit about everywhere and they follow hedgerows and they, you can see, I mean, you see them everywhere. They go, they go into gardens, they come into gardens a lot. Um, they'll often stop and feed on flowering crucifers and things like that. Um, very busy, very beautiful as well, actually. And although the females don't have the orange tips, they do have the same mottled underside, which is here. Uh, the orange tips, okay, so that's, that's done. Now, normally, if I was doing a normal butterfly, I would now proceed to do that, but I know what these colours are. They're straight from the box. Don't need to worry about it being inconsistent if I mix them differently. So that's okay. That's not a problem. Um, so what I'm going to do now is this bit's white. So I need to make sure that I let the paper be white. But at the same time, there's slightly, there's a yellowishness. So I'm making a mix of Naples yellow and is that Windsor yellow? You guys probably know more than I do. Anyway, it's a nice greenish pale yellow. Making it quite watery this time. I might zoom in so you can see what I'm doing, actually. Maybe that's a clever idea. There we go. Okay. I don't like zooming in on some levels. It makes, it makes what I'm doing look so rubbish because it's all, all enlarged. Uh, so I'm just blending out, blending out this bit, the tips of the orange, into the white so it's not such a stark contrast. And then I'm going to put a little bit along the lines of the veins as well. Yeah, so I was saying about the orange tip, there's, they think, they being the eminent zoologists, they think probably that the reason for the very bright orange is to advertise toxicity. So these butterflies and males especially are pretty unpleasant tasting. Um, and that's because they were raised on these mustard mustard family of plants um, so if you're a bird and you see an orange tip and you're not aware of what's going on and you eat the orange tip it's going to be sort of hot and peppery and taste really to you pretty unpleasant um, and you will not wish to have a, another orange tip so that's what they think the orange tips are about. The females don't need the orange tips quite so much because they're not out looking for mates right they're hanging around waiting to be found and then really their main priority is to not be noticed at all and not be predated on so they rely on their pale colour and also on the mottling on those bottom wings to hide them and to camouflage them um, right okay so now those veins are still there I'm, I'm meant to be working with the white aren't I come on concentrate 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 so working the white, okay. so literally this is just super carefully, I'm going to outline that there so we know that that junction is distinct and is there. These shouldn't be orange, damn it, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, maybe I'll just have to pretend that they are orange, that's annoying. You see sometimes you just lose concentration for a second and you make pretty Annoying mistakes. Never mind. Okay. It also means because these wings are more or less symmetrical that that same mistake <laughs> that I've made on this side I will have to repeat on the other side. But this time when I make when I paint those veins in I'll know I'm not being entirely honest about the specimen. That's annoying. Often you can fix mistakes, but that one, that's not really a fixable one. So were I to put white paint on top of it, 
it wouldn't hide the orange lines at all it would just make them a bit chalky so I don't want to do that so I've kind of messed up but it doesn't matter I'm going to use some grey to try and fix it because in fact those wing veins oh those wing veins are slightly greyish the um underside of these butterflies wings the mottled bit looks when we look at them like green kind of patchy mottling effect but if you look closely it's actually just a cunning optical mixture of blacks and yellows and a lot of the time in nature that's the case <clears throat> things that you think you understand oh yeah i know exactly what that is you may well not have it quite right so your initial look you think something is one color but actually on a on a on a on a closer inspection you'll find it's really not okay so now i'm mixing up a dark gray <clears throat> so this is oh, i meant to tell you what colors i've mixed well i know there's some of this green in which is a That's like a tear verti thing. There's also some Van Dyke brown. There's some Payne's grey. Just kept going till I got kind of bluish greyish. It's quite a dark colour, so I'm going to have to go a bit easy with it. But this is the bit where the wings join the body. So I know that right on this junction here, it's quite, quite prominent. And also, it swallows up that vein. So that's not such a problem. This also goes up here. Ah! See, these aren't quite scales. They're kind of dimply. I mean, they are scales, right? But they... So I'm literally stippling with a paintbrush here. And let's see if we can fix this with the lightest of... Going over that orange. That was such a minimal but tiresome disaster. Ah! Oh, there's the phone. That is the benefit of phone calls. While I was on the phone, I was able to um, plot in this because I'm fortunate enough to be able to paint at the same time as I chat. And from that, you can tell how long that phone call was. Right, so these wings are now, this one looks much bigger than the other one. Okay, I don't want to think about that. Um, these, are <laughs> these are getting there. So I now need to plot in those veins and make them yellow before we start putting in the brown. So I'm rinsing all that grey off my brush. Really important to have a clean brush for this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use that same, this one, this very bright greenish yellow. So just a touch of this, which is a cadmium yellow dark. So it's a nice, nice bright yellow. I'm putting quite a lot of water with it. Water, watery with it. What? Okay. And literally... I'm just going to paint over these veins because you can't really, the veins are not white. Um, within the orange, you can't, if you look at the butterfly, you really can't even see where the veins are. But I, I needed them there to, to build up with. But now we can knock them back a little. Now they've done their purpose. Now we're trying to close in on the actual coloration of the butterfly. I'll do the same on the other side. Extending the colouring slightly into the paler area of the wing cells. Because that's how it looks when I look at a butterfly. And then with also on top of this, we're going to put another, another orange yellow wash. Again, we're going to have to be a bit careful. Don't want to go too dark. Don't want to lose all the definitions that we've spent time putting in. But we need to lose a bit more. I don't want it to look too stark. This is all yellowish as well. Have I done that on the other side? What you do to one side, make sure you do to both sides. Right. Okay, so now, so this is the, the orange that we started off with. So I'm just going to make a watery version of that, I think. She says, not really 
I've been quite sure what she's going to do. So that's quite watery. Can you see? It's got quite a lot of water in compared to this one. It's much thicker. So I'm just going to put that on top now. Over the whole thing, over those veins and over the orange. Just slam it on. And once it's on, I'm going to be very careful around the edges. Don't want them to dry all blunt. And I can still see the out the the little pencil lines there as a guide for where these darker colours are going to have to be. Now I'm coming back in again with a sharper brush, just in those edges so it blends in and doesn't look all chunky. I don't like it when you lose detail when a, a, a top wash dries kind of blunt, do you know what I mean? So you'll have all your detailed work underneath and if you put the top wash on and it's too dark then it swallows up the the gradation of the detailing which is not a look that I want to be doing. It's blending really isn't it, I suppose. Blending it all in. There we are. Again, knocking those veins back again. I'm gonna I'm gonna be knocking them back for a while, I can tell. They're gonna need more. Okay. So far so good. And on the other side. Same again. This is a bit bumpy just there, that's a bit rubbish. I don't know what I've done there. I'm gonna have to come back and fix that. Like I said before, a lot of being okay at doing art is not to do with what you can or can't do, but it's how good you are at fixing your stupid mistakes once you've made those mistakes. Okay, and here's this blending thing going on again. And always when you paint, follow the line of growth, whether it's a leaf or a butterfly or whatever. So go that way, don't go like that, because that's not how the scales are laid down. Um, in fact, why don't we see that horrible bit that I was talking about where it looks a bit bumpy. Just, can I get it under the, yeah, just here. So what I'm going to do, just while I think of it, I am going to get a bit of oops, Winsor & Newton Designers Gouache Permanent White. Put a bit on the tip of the brush, quite just straight from the straight from the um, tube, and try and knock that bit back. I can see exactly what's gone wrong. It's just that line is m micrometers too thick. And then adding a little bit of water. This may not work, but I think it will it'll help. There we go. Ta-da! It's a bit better anyway. Not perfect, it's a bit better. Okay. Right, zoom out. So, we've got our orange bits. Now, we need to put in the black tips. Um, here and the black spots brownish colour it's not black even though when I've seen them in the wild before I, think, I thought they are black they're not so I'm going to mix up what am I going to use and where am I going to mix it I'm going to mix it here I suppose so that's just sort of I think that's burnt um does that sound right to you Burnt umber, and I'm going to add a little bit of green because, partly because there looks like there's a little bit of green there, and also because on the lower wings you've got those blotches which show through from the underside. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, and they're slightly greenish, so I want that. So that's a, yeah, that's a horrid colour actually. It looks like wet cow pat. So I'm going to add a bit of purple to give it some depth. That's nicer. There we go. 
Right, so what I was saying about the underside of the wings. So, can you see these bits here are mottled grey? And they're mottled grey because the underside is this amazing dark green. So it comes through it's to, to, do with, to do with the wings being slightly translucent. But because there is green in that, I want to echo that in the brown areas. Okay, is this dry yet? Hmm. Um, I think I'm going to work on this wing. Now I've got both down, doesn't really matter which one I do, right? So I can still see this line here. Can you see it? Oh, maybe you can't. Hang on. Yeah, you can. You see the, the faint pencil line going along here? So I'm, I'm following that. And I've got to remember to leave my white bits as well. So again, it's just that the same thing. Of building up strokes. Be careful here because they don't go all the way in. Okay, so that's my edge. What is happening here? That's really. Drawn that up wrong. There's far too much brown there. There shouldn't be that much. That's okay. Luckily, I've caught it. So, this is really quite a thin line of brown here. And keep it nice and discreet, not nearly as wide as the pencil line. This is what this is why it's really important when you're drawing to always keep looking at your subject. Because often there'll be little things that you've done where you've observed things wrong. And if you can fix them, you always should, right? Okay. And next one along here. Careful. Carefully does it. Again, the, the brown comes out to the edge rather than in as far as I've drawn it. Tricky thing here is going to be emulating that same pattern symmetrically on the opposite side of the butterfly but i'm sure i can manage that's sort of almost circled it's they look like little dark brown diamonds almost more paint ah used the wrong bit of the brush no can I fix it? Yes, I can. It's all right. Don't panic. Never panic. Just have to say there's a bit more variety in this butterfly. A bit, 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 bit more brown just there. Gosh. Come on. Okay. Okay, that's going to be fine. Bit more water, bit more paint, bit more water, bit more paint. Now, this top bit, we really are. Oh, I've got to move all sorts of bits of wire and stuff from the filming to do this. Uh, oh dear. So this bit, the top, I was right. My observations were correct. So that's that really is quite... I'm going to keep it right in front of me so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that, that comes out like that. That does that. And this side. Okay. So remember, you can't breathe again, right? And I've really got that lined in. Okay. So let's say it starts with its solid brown around here, I think that's right. Something like that. Okay. 
Ugh. I think it was too thick. I've got to get the consistency right. I needed to add a bit of water to that. If it's too thick, it doesn't flow properly from the brush. And that's what was happening there. Um, you want to know more about the biology of the orange tip? What can I tell you? The caterpillars, when they hatch out, they look like little black maggots. And they are covered in long hairs. Um, there was some discussion in Richard Lewington's book about what those hairs were for, but we won't go into that. It seems pretty inconclusive. Um, these little white bits are smaller. And the egg's quite cool. So when the egg is laid, oh, I'm going to get these details wrong, I know. When the egg is laid, it's one colour. And then as it matures before it hatches, it goes a pinkish colour. And then I think it goes a kind of reddish orange before actually hatching out. I've never actually seen an orange tip egg. And that reflects badly on me because supposedly they're extremely easy to find. If you just look on any patch of cuckoo flower. I mean, I have looked on patches of cuckoo flower, but if you look on any patch of cuckoo flower, there'll be at least one caterpillar egg per plant, right? And there, this is a common butterfly, actually. It doesn't seem to have suffered quite as badly as a lot of the British butterflies. I mean, things that aren't good for it is, obviously, if you have a stand of cuckoo flower with these caterpillars eating it if that gets cut down too early before the seed pods have developed then obviously the caterpillar is going to die so that's not good um, and the mowing of grassy verges so one of the plants that it does like along with the cuckoo flower something called garlic mustard or jack by the hedge I think some people call it it's definitely common in hedgerows and it's normally around June time in Britain where so that drivers can see where they're going. The hedgerows are cut back. Um, and I think it used to be earlier, but because of nesting birds, they changed the time. And it's better for nesting birds, sure, but it's still not great for the caterpillar population. Because if you're a caterpillar, you've only just sort of set out. So that's not good. Um, but saying that, it's still... The main, the main problem is not when grass is cut. It's just the fact that soil has been improved so much with nitrogen, made so much more fertile, that it's pretty monoculture these days, the grassland. And um, the cuckoo flower is far less common than it used to be. And if the cuckoo flower is less common, so is the orange tip. But saying that, as I say, don't be too disheartened. It's not um it's not about to go extinct, this one isn't anyway. So yeah, do my best not to be too apocalyptic about the orange tip. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm gonna do that on the other side. So I'll just leave you for a minute or two. I've done the other side of the wing. I've also now noticed that this film is already 45 minutes long. Ha! Huh. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I've done this painting with you guys. And then with the rest of it, with the body and with the lower wings, um, I'm going to get the whole thing painted. And then I'm going to explain to you what I've done. Because um, otherwise this is become, going to become unwieldy. Um, and anyway, it'll be the same technique throughout. But the only one thing I will do now is show you as I did before with the knocking back of the veins. I'm going to do that here because it's quite dramatic. Dramatic. Look at that. There you go. I was also thinking it'd probably be worth my while to live stream. Because if I live streamed, then I wouldn't have to worry about doing things like uploading incredibly long films, would I? Because it would just go out and then it would disappear again and that would be lovely. Okay, so knocking that back. In an ideal world, I'd have rotated that so that the little bits of wet would anchor on the far end rather than the near end. But it's fine. It's fine. OK, so I'm going to do the rest of the butterfly and then explain to you what I've done. OK, back in the room. 
so we're done with the orange tip butterfly so the approach i used on the body was uh dark grays building up the fur following the direction of growth and then a top layer of gray and then a top layer of yellow on top of that and this was the thing where that as i was painting i was looking more and more at the at the butterfly the specimens so in amongst this i'd left when i did the lower um veins I left them white to start with and then when you look really closely they're bright yellow so i did that and what was lovely about that is when i did that it unified the top wings with the bottom wings so i added a little more yellow before putting these mottlings on i added a background of kind of blues around where the veins were really light cerulean blue and then back that up with a little bit of kind of pale yellow to echo that kind of greenish color these were just little shapes and i had a panic because I was redrawing them as I was painting. So I often redraw as I paint. And so the shapes were changing. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did that one first. I thought, oh no, they're not going to be parallel. They're not going to be symmetrical. And then, a moment of joy and love, I realised that in fact in real life, weirdly, there are markings on the bottom wings on both my specimens. They're not, they're really not the same at all on either side. So that was very, very gratifying. Um, I seem to have got the page very dirty while I'm painting, which is a shame. But so the last thing that has to be done is just to rub out those pencil marks. So I'm going to do it on this butterfly, which dried hours ago now. Oh, I also did some drop shadows, uh, quite light. You won't really notice them, but can you see it here? And that's a mixture of cobalt and purple. And it's just to, to throw the butterflies into stark relief, to, to bring them out from the background of the flowers here we go and this one is it dry is it dry yeah it's dry and again you can see there that the outline of the body was far larger um, than what I ended up painting and again that's that thing of you just come back you check you check you draw you check you draw you check you draw you check and you change your mind about things and, and that's that's fine so just because you've drawn something up in pencil my rubber's like dissolved on me while I'm trying to share my words of wisdom um so just because you've drawn something up in pencil it doesn't mean it's set in stone oh nice i like what i did there um so yeah continue to observe and draw so and then we brush these off i know some people have special brushes to do it but i'm a bit lazy as you know i take shortcuts left right and center so there we are so that's finished um i will put a, a scan of the entire thing up um right after this So I've finished the illustration now of the two orange tip butterflies with the cuckoo flower and if you've been extremely patient you've been with me most of that process so I thank you for that. Um, if you'd like to see more of my work please visit my website which is lizzieharper.co.uk and there you can browse galleries of illustrations I've done and there's a whole section of um, illustrations which are available to buy if that is of interest uh if you've got any comments please do leave them oh like and subscribe like and subscribe like and subscribe do like and subscribe i do try and um, produce these films every now and then just explaining how i go about doing my illustrations thank you very much for your time and yeah it's been lovely um and hopefully it's been quite useful for you guys as well in terms of just sharing my techniques uh thanks again everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.